Hello guys, uh, today I'll talk about Fast API and Kubernetes. I'll show you step by step how to run Fast API application on Kubernetes platform. And uh, Fast API application will run uh, through Docker container, and this Docker container will run on Kubernetes pod. Uh, Kubernetes pod is a logical unit which uh, uh, acts like a platform uh, which could run uh, multiple containers. And all the containers that are assigned to the same uh, pod, uh, this con all those containers, they share some uh, resources like the same IP, uh, they could share the storage, and uh, which is important, uh, all the containers that belong to pod, they, they would always run on, on the same node. So uh, let's see how it runs and uh, let's uh, jump um, to actual demo. Uh, and I'll try to explain it step by step so that you could reproduce it easily on your own environment. Uh, first of all, for the demo, I'll be using our open source product, Skipper, uh, which implements um, workflow for ML applications, but you could run any workload on, 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 this, um, um, uh, on this environment as well. So for the demo, I'll be using um, uh, workflow service. And actually, uh, when you start with Kubernetes, um, you should know that uh, Kubernetes runs containers. Uh, containers can be coming from, from Docker or it could be another a container platform, doesn't matter. In our case, we're using Docker. Uh, so to run container in Kubernetes, first of all, you need to have uh, images, Docker images. And when you have a set of services, uh, it's kind of cumbersome and uh, it takes uh, time to create Im each image separately. So I would recommend to use uh, Docker Compose and you run Docker Compose uh, uh, with flag build. And in this, in this case, Docker Compose would create the images, but it would not start containers because containers, we would start with Kubernetes. We don't need to start uh, containers with Docker Compose. So in this way, you build all the images. That's the first step. And then uh, for the second step, we would go to the service itself and we would check also how the Docker file is being defined. And this Docker file was used in the first step by Docker Compose to build the image. So Docker, Docker file contains entry point. <clears throat> and in this entry point, we um, include a command which would uh, start the process in this container. And uh, in our case, we start fast API application so this is the command to start a uh, fast API application on port uh, 5000 and it will be exposed from the container. So this is the Docker file and we, for the Kubernetes, we provide the image and once Kubernetes starts the cont container from that image, it the fast API process starts automatically because information uh, instruction how to start fast API is being included in a Docker file. Okay, so we got Docker file, we got Docker Compose, and we build the images with Docker Compose build. Uh, what else? We need a uh, metadata file for Kubernetes, uh, where we would we'll describe which image we would like to use, uh, some additional parameters maybe, and how we would uh, create this Kubernetes uh, uh, pod, which would run the container. And this is um, all the metadata is defined here in workflow pod. Uh, uh, metadata file. This is a very simple one. You could make it more complex if you want, but uh, my goal for this video was to have a simplest as possible example, uh, which would demonstrate how to start fast application in the Kubernetes with a Docker container. So over here we have a pod name, then we, have, we can list containers and the same pod can uh, contain multiple containers, as I said before. In our case, we just have one. And uh, this is certain architecture decision when you would like to have a single container in port on, or maybe multiple. And um, based on the best practice recommendation, if you see that uh, both containers must communicate um, between each other, or must work uh, together, then it makes sense to use, uh, to create all those containers under the single port. If you see that containers are independent, then there is no 
uh, obvious communication between them, then you could push them into different spots and this would allow to run containers on different nodes if you want. In this case, we have one container, we specify the image path from where we get the uh, image. And I have a property called image pool policy if not present. This means if the image is available locally on my machine, then uh, Kubernetes uh, would pull the image from, from my local registry. Otherwise, by default, it would try to use on a Docker registry online. And uh, if image is not pushed there, then it will report the error. And by the way, to test uh, Kubernetes, uh, to play with Kubernetes, I'm using um, Docker environment and I enable Kubernetes support in Docker locally. But the same metadata, you could, um, the same instructions you could run on the cloud environment as well, and it should work. Okay, then we have a name for the container, which will be started by Kubernetes. And we expose a port, 5000, and uh, this is HTTP port for this container. And we uh, do additional uh, check, uh, define a check here, Lazarus Pro, which allows uh, to verify if container is, if process in the container is up and running, if our fast, a uh, fast API application is running. And it automatically does a check and, and, and it pings the API endpoint from fast API. If it will see that um, endpoint doesn't respond, then it will restart the pod and start the application from, from scratch. Okay, and there's a way to define service uh, interface in Kubernetes, <coughs> which would allow to expose um, service from uh, from current container from current port to the outside. But in our case, workflow um, container is doesn't suppose isn't supposed to be run externally. So to test API from uh, this container, will will do uh, port forwarding. But uh, in general, if you would like to expose uh, container to the outside, you need to define a service with load balancing, a load balancer in Kubernetes. Okay, then there is a readme file over here and I have explained how to build and run Kubernetes pod for, for this image. And now let's, uh, let's test it. Let's see how it works. I'll switch to uh, development environment. And this is the same readme file and I'll go step by step. So first, uh, we need to build the image and uh, with certain tag, uh, which will, uh, this command would use the Docker file. Uh, I'll not run this step because I already have the image and uh, I can verify that by running um, Docker images and this is the image uh, which was built uh, before. <coughs> Okay, sorry, I was looking for the step where I explained how to build images. And uh, yeah, this is uh, for the case when we uh, run, when we would like to run <coughs> a container uh, locally. But this is the section for Kubernetes. And over here we have a command to, to create a pod. But in any case, it was good to, to double check that we have an image. Uh, otherwise, uh, pod creation would fail. We have the image so we can. Uh, go and uh, copy uh, this command. We're using uh, kubectl uh, kube con um, um, controller command, which would, um, uh, from command line, allows to uh, execute um, operations towards Kubernetes and uh, execute the actions uh, on Kubernetes engine. So with this command, we execute a metadata file, which explains uh, how to create a pod. Uh, which image to uh, get for that port and um, uh, basically which port to expose and so on. Okay, we run the command. Port, uh, it reports that port is created, but um, uh, this command run, uh, runs asynchronously. It may be that uh, port creation runs still in the background and we could check if uh, it was really created. We could list all the ports and it actually running uh, state is good. Uh, age 14 seconds, zero restarts. Okay, we could also, if you want, describe the port. This prints a lot of information, uh, IP and so on. So if you would like to explore more uh, about the port, you could um, check the output. And then we would like somehow to uh, check if fast API process is running, but we don't want to de define uh, 
Kubernetes service for this uh, pod because uh, we think that uh, uh, services from current port would not be exposed to the public. But there's another quick way uh, we could um, do port forwarding. So we could uh, forward the port from uh, from uh, from the spot, and we could call a container that runs on given port from the. We could access container services that run on current port from the outside. Okay, and then we could also uh, print out logs that are uh, reported in the port over here. We see that container was started in the port, and because we have a liveliness prop, uh, which runs each 10 seconds, it tests itself. The Kubernetes is testing uh, each 10 seconds if um, the fast API process is running, and we see in the log there are calls uh, executed, and uh, all of them are responding uh, correctly. Okay, and just to, to be sure that port forwarding is working and container is up, we could um, access. Uh, fast API um, endpoints from the outside, and we could execute uh, test endpoint. We get a successful result, and we could also execute another endpoint, and we could uh, check uh, serving sync uh, key. Execute, and we get back the result. And yeah, if you want, uh, if you don't need the port anymore, you can always delete it with um, this command. So thanks for watching. And the goal of this video was to show and uh, demo to you that how easy it is to run a fast API uh, application uh, in Docker container uh, through on top of Docker Kuber on top of Kubernetes. Um, hopefully. Yeah, actually, right now I'm busy on adding Kubernetes support for Skipper. So as long as I add more functionality, I'll uh, record more videos and um, hopefully you'll be able to learn something new as well. Because Kubernetes is a complex topic and there are lots of resources online, but um, it's kind of uh, hard to find answers because uh, uh, it's a bit cumbersome and complex and uh, information is fragmented. And when you build something practical, uh, you need some uh, ready solutions or best practices. So this is my goal, uh, to present something uh, small, practical, which you, you could use straight away. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Bye.